Hello students. So, in the last class um, we worked out few examples um, on uh, beta and gamma function. Today I am going to give uh, one more example uh, where you can express an integral in terms of uh, gamma function and then we will move to uh, the next topic which is uh, differentiation and then the integral sign. So, to start with let me write the example. So, the example reads as uh, show that um, integral from 0 to 1 square root of 1 minus x to the power 4 dx can be written as 1 by 12 uh, square root of 2 by pi times gamma 1 by 4 uh, square. So, gamma 1 by 4 square. So, here you can see that the left hand side does not at all resemble with uh, gamma integral. However, the answer can be expressed as gamma function. So, how can we do that? Let us see. Uh, so, the solution uh, we will assume that our integral i is equals to 0 to 1, 1 minus x to the power 4 dx. So, here I will take x equals to uh, x square equals to sin theta. So, then in that case this will be 2 x dx equals to um, cos theta d theta and uh, when x is 0, when x is 0 then uh, theta is also 0 and uh, when x is 1 then theta is pi by 2 then theta is pi by 2. So, based on this our integral i would reduce to 0 to pi by 2 1 minus sin square theta. So, this is basically cos square theta and square root of it will give cos theta and uh, dx would turn into cos theta d theta divided by uh, 2 square root of sin theta and uh, d theta. So, this is basically 1 by integral from 0 to pi by 2 sin theta or sin to the power minus half theta cos square theta d theta. Now, uh, we will use that uh, beta uh, the sin to the power p theta times cos to the power q theta equals to uh, beta p plus 1. Uh, so, basically we will use this formula here. So, the formula which I am talking about is this one is this one. So, here p and q are both greater than minus 1. So, here p and q are both greater than minus 1. So, instead of p I will choose minus half and instead of q I will choose 2. So, then this whole thing will reduce to this will reduce to so this whole thing will reduce to uh, half um, times another half uh, beta 2 plus 1 by 2 and uh, minus half plus 1 by 2. So, I can write since beta uh, p plus 1 by 2 and uh, q plus 1 by 2 is equals to uh, the formula is um, the formula is um, beta p plus 1 by 2 q plus 1 by 2 is um, so this formula is p plus 1 by 2 so this is uh, integral from 0 to pi by 2 cos uh, uh, p plus 1 uh, so cos. So, so, this will be I can write this formula as I have to do some adjustments here and then this will be uh, cos of uh, 2 uh, p plus 1 by 2 minus p. So, cos of p plus 1 p plus 1 minus 1 2 times. Uh, so, in place of m I have this one minus 1 and uh, sin of 2 q plus 1 by 2 minus 
1 dx. So, this is the formula which we are using basically. So, 2 times p plus 1 by 2 minus 1 and sin of 2 times q plus 1 by 2 minus 1. So, ultimately instead of q, I am taking a, a minus half. So, this will reduce to a, this will reduce to minus half okay. and instead of p, I am taking 2. So, this will be 3 by 2 and 2, 2 will get cancelled. So, ultimately 2. Yes. So, I am using this formula here. Now, I can be able to write it as 1 by 4 times beta and uh, this will be beta 3 by 2 uh, times uh, gamma uh, beta 1 by 4. So, this will be our beta uh, 1 by 4 and now based on which I can use that uh, first relation which says that this will be gamma 3 by 2 times uh, gamma 1 by 4 uh, divided by gamma um, 3 by 2 plus gamma 3 by 2 plus 1 by 4. So, this can be written as 1 by 4 and uh, this is uh, basically um, 1 by 2 times gamma half times gamma 1 by 4 divided by gamma 7 by 4. So, this gamma 3 by 2. So, we, we note that gamma 3 by 2 can be written as gamma uh, 1 plus 1 by 2 and uh, then this can be written as um, then this can be written as gamma half. Uh, so, this can be written as half times gamma half and uh, yes. Now, now uh, so, this can be written as half times gamma half. So, so, this whole thing can be now converted into, so this whole thing can be now, so this is our 1 by 4 as always. So, this is our 1 by 4. And then we have half times gamma half, gamma 1 by 4 and then gamma 7 by 4. So, this can be written as uh, uh, square root of pi times gamma 1 by 4 because gamma half is uh, square root of pi and then this is 1 by 8, uh, 7 by 4 minus 1 and uh, this will be um, gamma 3 by 4. So, here what we are doing is um, uh, n minus 1. So, 3 by 2 minus 1 is half and then we have gamma half. So, th that is the formula which I was using. So, um, we can either write it or we do not write it. So, the formula is gamma n equals to n minus 1 times gamma uh, n minus 1. So, this is what we are using here. Okay, And then we will use this formula again here. So, um, this one. Now, this is uh, square root of pi by 8, this one will be gamma 1 by 4 and uh, this will be um, 7 by 4. So, we will obtain basically as uh, 3 by 4 and uh, this will reduce to uh, gamma 3 by 4. Now, we will have uh, square root of pi by 6 and uh, we will have gamma 1 by 4 times. Uh, um, so, we know that uh, gamma 3 by 4, we just derived this formula gamma 1 by 4 equals to square root of 2 by pi uh, square root of 2 times pi. So, gamma 3 by 4 will be uh, square root of uh, 2 times pi and uh, divided by gamma 1 by 4. So, that will go at the uh, numerator and then this whole thing will turn into a square. So, we will basically have uh, square root of uh, 2. So, we will basically have uh, this here and uh, this will turn into 1 by 12 times square root of 2 by pi times gamma 1 by 4 whole square. So, this is what we needed to prove. It is just some algebraic calculation which you can be able to do by yourself. So, here we see that uh, although this integral here, 
Although this integral here had no connection with gamma function whatsoever, we can be able to reduce into a gamma function first of all uh, into a beta function formula and then we can be able to reduce this whole thing into a gamma function formula and uh, with the help of which uh, we can be able to just do some uh, use some uh, gamma function properties and then we can be able to, the able to derive the required um, uh, right hand side. So, this is what we needed to prove. So, similarly you may come across with uh, different types of integral in gamma function example and uh, based on which uh, you can be able to calculate uh, um, uh, how to say the, the, those integrals uh, using uh, the function of gamma um, uh, properties of gamma function. So, um, I will include some more examples in your assignment sheet uh, just for you to have a look at them and um, I am pretty sure you will be able to um, you will be able to um, solve uh, such problems uh, involving integrals and expressing them in terms of gamma function. So, the next topic in our uh, third chapter is the uh, differentiation of an in under the integral sign. So, this is also a very interesting topic and uh, not only that you will need it uh, here in the integral calculus, but uh, you will be able to see uh, this particular formula has a lot of applications uh, in um, in uh, in PDEs or also um, when when you are uh, solving how to say um, um, ordinary differential equations uh, where you where, when so for example you might come across with uh, uh, certain results where you need to differentiate an integral where where um, which is uh, not usual what we do in our differential calculus so in differential calculus we we are usually given a function of this type y is equals to f x and uh, when we say differentiate then we basically differentiate like d y d x equals to f dash x and if uh, when f dash x is a fun f x is a function of one variable let us say f x can be uh, our uh, x to the power 5 plus sin x plus e to the power x um, plus some other function dot dot and so on. So, we can be able to differentiate this function um, because it is a function of one variable. Now, um, now um, if we have a function of two variable, let us say z equals to f x y, then we usually have partial derivatives. So, we can be able to calculate del f del x and uh, del f del y or del square f by del x square, del square f by del y square dot dot and so on. So, that means, um, if you have a function of one variable, function of two variable, then doing the differentiation is quite easy and we have uh, so the function needs to be uh, how to say um, um, smooth in a way um, but uh, differentiation of an integral is not that straightforward so it's not only the function of one variable or two variable uh, or the smooth function you can differentiate you can also differentiate an integral but in order to do that um, it involves uh, some kind of special properties of that function and um, we will look into those properties. So, first of all, if I write i equals to integral from a to b f x dx. So, here x is a variable and we do not have any parameter. So, if x is a variable when I integrate then it will always result into a constant or we can say that it, it as a constant function. So, a constant is also a function which uh, assumes the same value. So, if we are on the x and y plane then it will assume always the same value and um, so y equals to f x equals to a constant. So, a constant function is also a function, but it is constant at every point. So, when you integrate a function of one variable we obtain a constant function and uh, that constant function is always differentiable. So, there is no um, how to say a special thing to look at. However, if you have an integral of this type let us say d y then after you integrate what do we obtain? We do not obtain a constant we obtain a function of x mainly because here variable x is involved. So, after we are done with the integration we will be able to obtain a function of x phi x. Now, if that phi x is smooth that means, if the partial derivative of phi uh, if the derivative of the function phi x with respect to x. So, if 
the differentiation of uh, phi x with respect to x exist, then in that case we can be able to differentiate this integral i here with respect to x. And this function is differentiable with respect to x depends highly on the differentiability of this function with respect to x. Because if this function is not differentiable with respect to x, then this one will also be not differentiable with respect to x. So, in order to have the derivative, in order to differentiate this function, we need to have the differentiability of this function with respect to x. And in other words, the partial derivative of this function x uh, of this function f with respect to x must exist. Not only that, in order to have it to be existing on, on a given domain of integration, it has to be continuous throughout that interval, so that it will exist at every point. So, that means, this function here f x must be, so must exist and continuous on some rectangular domain. on some domain r. So, I can put this whole thing in a in a statement. So, let us put this whole thing in a statement or a theorem. Um, so, the theorem reads as um, the theorem reads as let phi y equals to integral from a to b. So, now we are in the function of two variable case f x y d x where our f x y where f x y is a continuous function is a continuous function of a continuous function of x y in the rectangle r equals to all those x and y such that a less or equal to x less or equal to b and c less or equal to y less or equal to d. So, that means, we have a rectangular domain uh, sorry, we have a rectangular domain of this type where the function f is defined. So, this is uh, let us say, so this is our a, b, c, and d and this is our rectangle r where the function is defined or where we are performing the differentiation or integration. Now, and f of y x y. So, like I was saying in the in the previous slide the partial derivative must exist and it is continuous in r. It is continuous in r then part then the derivative of phi will exist and is equal to integral from a to b del del y of f x y d x that is f phi dash y which is basically d y d d d d y of phi y is equals to integral d d y a to b f x y d x equals to integral from a to b del del y f x y d x. That means, if the function if, if um, the function f 
uh, is continuous in the rectangle um, R which is given in this fashion and uh, if the partial derivative with respect to y for this function f exists and if it is continuous in R then the derivative of the function phi, of the function phi can be given in this fashion and you can bring the derivative inside uh, the integral and when we bring the derivative inside the integral then it will turn into a partial derivative which makes sense because in case of function of two variable we do not have d d y we always have del del y or del del x. So, once we bring the integral inside a uh, differential uh, differentiation uh, in inside the integral it will turn into a partial derivative and this is our first formula for the differentiation under the integral sign. So, we are doing the differentiation under the integral sign. So, this is the integral sign which we were talking about and this is our uh, differentiation. So, you see if our integrand has some special properties we can even differentiate the resulting integral uh, with respect to the parameter. So, here y is our parameter and x is the variable of this integral and uh, at the end we can differentiate this integral with respect to the parameter. So, here here y is basically our parameter all right. So, next uh, proof of this theorem is um, uh, we are also skipping because uh, it is not uh, uh, in the in the scope of this uh, lecture because it is a little bit uh, um, uh, how to say uh, uh, extensive in a way. Um, and uh, we will mostly uh, focused on working out some examples. Um, if um, if you are interested, uh, you can definitely look into those books uh, where they have used the epsilon delta definition, which I'm sure you already know about. And uh, by using some uh, inequalities and epsilon delta definition, you can be able to prove this theorem. So we we'll leave um, the proof um, up to up to the up to the reader or up to the students and. Uh, at first we will see the uh, application of this uh, theorem which we just stated. Let us name it as theorem 1. Okay. So, first example is using differentiation under the integral sign prove that integral from 0 to 1 x to the power y minus 1 divided by log x dx is equals to log of 1 plus y. So, here we have to use the differentiation under the integral sign because it is specifically said in the statement. So, now let us consider i equals to integral from 0 to 1 x to the power y minus 1 by log x dx. So, first of all after integrating this integral we will obtain a function which is a function of y only because x is our variable. So, we are integrating with respect to x and once the integration is done we will end up with a function of y only all right. So, I can write it as i y. Now, what we will do? Uh, we will differentiate both sides uh, with respect to y because uh, x to the power y i is also a differentiable function. So, we can be able to differentiate this uh, f of x with respect to y. So, if we can differentiate with respect to y and also it does not involve any kind of uh, uh, how to say uh, bad behaving functions in a way that partial derivative with respect to uh, y would also be continuous. So, we can differentiate this uh, function now. So, let us differentiate differentiate with respect to y. So, what would happen? We would obtain d i y d y equals to integral from 0 to 1 our differential will come differentiation will come inside and this will become x to the power y minus 1 times log x dx. So, the diff when we are differentiating it will be 0 to 1 del del y uh, x to the power y by log x minus del del y 
1 by log x. So, now 1 by log x differentiation of 1 by log x uh, will be 0 because we are differentiating with respect to y and this function does not involve any variable with uh, of y. So, that means, uh, this will be treated as a constant and differentiation of constant is always 0. So, we will obtain 0 to 1 x to the power y uh, times log uh, x to the power y uh, times log x times log x after differentiation. So, this is what we will obtain. Now, we can integrate both sides. So, if I inti uh, so we can integrate this one not both sides we will integrate this one and uh, this will reduce to x to the power y plus 1 divided by y plus 1 integral from 0 to 1. So, this will be 1 by y plus 1. So, that means d i d y equals to 1 by y plus 1. So, we will have i equals to d i equals to d y by y plus 1. This is basically our ordinary differential equation all right. So, at the end we are obtaining an ordinary differential equation. So, if I integrate this will turn into i y equals to um, log of y plus 1 plus log c to the base e. So, this can be written as log of y plus 1 times c to the base e. Now, I need to obtain the value of c. So, what is y 0? So, let us call it as equation 2 and uh, I will call the original problem by equation 1. So, um, or I will call this this relation not the original problem, but I will call this relation as 1. So, what is i 0? So, i 0 now i 0 is nothing but integral from 0 to 1 x to the power 0 minus 1 by log x. Now, x to the power 0 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So, the value of i 0 is 0 and using uh, substituting i uh, y equals to 0 in 2 putting i equals to putting i equals to uh, i y equals to 0 in 2 we will obtain we will obtain uh, 0 equals to log of c, uh, c to the base e. So, therefore, c equals to e to the power 0 which is basically 1 and we will use this value of c in 2. So, from 2 we will have i y equals to log of y to the base e plus 1 times c, c is 1. So, this is basically log of e y plus 1 and i y is nothing but our given integral right. So, this is what we started with. equals to log of y plus 1 to the base e and this is what we needed to prove. So, you see just using the formula of differentiation under the integral sign we can be able to calculate uh, the value of this integral uh, without doing any complicated method of substitution or anything. So, uh, this is a very nice tool which uh, helps us um, calculate the value uh, of an integral uh, by solving some kind of ordinary differential equation like, like here. And uh, in the next class, we will look into a very important theorem of a differential under the integral sign, which is uh, Leibniz uh, rule of differentiation under the integral sign. So, um, I will uh, stop here for today and uh, I will look forward to your next class.